Dehydroepiandrosterone DHEA, also known as androstenolone, is an endogenous steroid hormone. It is one of the most abundant circulating steroids in humans, in whom it is produced in the adrenal glands, the gonads, and the brain. It functions as a metabolic intermediate in the biosynthesis of the androgen and estrogen sex steroids both in the gonads and in various other tissues. However, DHEA also has a variety of potential biological effects in its own right, binding to an array of nuclear and cell surface receptors, and acting as a neurosteroid and modulator of neurotrophic factor receptors. In the United States, DHEA is sold as an over the counter supplement, and medication, called prasterone. Biological function As an androgen DHEA and other adrenal androgens such as androstenedione, although relatively weak androgens, are responsible for the androgenic effects of adrenarche, such as early pubic and axillary hair growth, adult-type body odor, increased oiliness of hair and skin, and mild acne. DHEA is potentiated locally via conversion into testosterone and dihydrotestosterone DHT in the skin and hair follicles. Women with complete androgen insensitivity syndrome CAIS, who have a non-functional androgen receptor R and are immune to the androgenic effects of DHEA and other androgens, have absent or only sparse, scanty pubic and axillary hair and body hair in general, demonstrating the role of DHEA and other androgens in body hair development at both adrenarche and pubarche. As an estrogen DHEA is a weak estrogen. In addition, it is transformed into potent estrogens such as estradiol in certain tissues such as the vagina, and thereby produces estrogenic effects in such tissues. As a neurosteroid As a neurosteroid and neurotrophin, DHEA has important effects in the central nervous system. Biological activity Hormonal activity Androgen receptor Although it functions as an endogenous precursor to more potent androgens such as testosterone and DHT, DHEA has been found to possess some degree of androgenic activity in its own right, acting as a low affinity key. Equals 1 μm, weak partial agonist of the androgen receptor R. However, its intrinsic activity at the receptor is quite weak, and on account of that, due to competition for binding with full agonists like testosterone, it can actually behave more like an antagonist depending on circulating testosterone and dihydrotestosterone DHT levels, and hence, like an antiandrogen. However, its affinity for the receptor is very low, and for that reason, is unlikely to be of much significance under normal circumstances. Estrogen receptors Equals, In addition to its affinity for the androgen receptor, DHEA has also been found to bind to and activate the ER alpha and ER beta estrogen receptors with key values of 1.1 μm and 0.5 μm, respectively, and EC50 values of greater than 1 μm and 200 nm, respectively. Though it was found to be a partial agonist of the ER alpha with a maximal efficacy of 30 to 70 percent, the concentrations required for this degree of activation make it unlikely that the activity of DHEA at this receptor is physiologically meaningful. Remarkably, however, DHEA acts as a full agonist of the ER beta with a maximal response similar to or actually slightly greater than that of estradiol, and its levels in circulation and local tissues in the human body are high enough to activate the receptor to the same degree as that seen with circulating estradiol levels at somewhat higher than their maximal, non ovulatory concentrations. Indeed, when combined with estradiol with both at levels equivalent to those of their physiological concentrations, overall activation of the ER beta was doubled. 
As such, it has been proposed that DHEA may be an important and potentially major endogenous estrogen in the body. Other nuclear receptors DHEA does not bind to or activate the progesterone, glucocorticoid, or mineralocorticoid receptors. Other nuclear receptor targets of DHEA besides the androgen and estrogen receptors include the PPAR alpha, PXR, and CAR. However, whereas DHEA is a ligand of the PPAR alpha and PXR in rodents, it is not in humans. In addition to direct interactions, DHEA is thought to regulate a handful of other proteins via indirect, genomic mechanisms, including the enzymes CYP2C11 and 11-beta-HSD1 the latter of which is essential for the biosynthesis of the glucocorticoids such as cortisol and has been suggested to be involved in the antiglucocorticoid effects of DHEA, and the carrier protein IGFBP1. Topic. Neurosteroid activity equals 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 Topic Neurotransmitter receptors equals 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 DHEA has been found to directly act on several neurotransmitter receptors, including acting as a positive allosteric modulator of the NMDA receptor, as a negative allosteric modulator of the GABAA receptor, and as an agonist of the sigma-1 receptor. Neurotrophin receptors in 2011, the surprising discovery was made that DHEA, as well as DHEAS, directly bind to and activate the TRKA and P75 NTR, receptors of neurotrophins like nerve growth factor and brain-derived neurotrophic factor with high affinity. DHEA was subsequently also found to bind to the TRKB and TRKC with high affinity, though it notably activated the TRKC but not the TRKB. DHEA and DHEAS bound to these receptors with affinities that were in the low nanomolar range around 5 nm, although the affinities were nonetheless approximately two orders of magnitude lower relative to highly potent polypeptide neurotrophins like NGF 0.01 to 0.1 nm. In any case, DHEA and DHEAS both circulate at requisite concentrations to activate these receptors and were thus identified as important endogenous neurotrophic factors. They have since been labeled steroidal microneurotrophins due to their small molecule and steroidal nature relative to their polypeptide neurotrophin counterparts. Subsequent research has suggested that DHEA and or DHEAS may in fact be phylogenetically ancient ancestral ligands of the neurotrophin receptors from early on in the evolution of the nervous system. The findings that DHEA binds to and potently activates neurotrophin receptors may explain the positive association between decreased circulating DHEA levels with age and age-related neurodegenerative diseases. Microtubule-associated protein 2 Topic. Similarly to pregnenolone, its synthetic derivative 3 beta methoxypregnenolone MAP4343, and progesterone, DHEA has been found to bind to microtubule associated protein 2, MAP2, specifically the MAP2C subtype. KD. 27 micro m. However, it is unclear whether DHEA increases binding of MAP2 to tubulin like pregnenolone. Equals 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 other activity. Equals 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 Topic G6PDH inhibitor. Topic DHEA is an incompetitive inhibitor of G6PDH 
17 mu m, IC 50 equals 18.7 mu m, and is able to lower NADPH levels and reduce NADPH dependent free radical production. It is thought that this action may possibly be responsible for much of the anti inflammatory, antihyperplastic, chemopreventative, antihyperlipidemic, antidiabetic, and antiobesic, as well as certain immunomodulating activities of DHEA, with some experimental evidence to support this notion available. However, it has also been said that inhibition of G6PDH activity by DHEA in vivo has not been observed and that the concentrations required for DHEA to inhibit G6PDH in vitro are very high, thus making the possible contribution of G6PDH inhibition to the effects of DHEA uncertain. Miscellaneous. <inaudible> 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 Equals DHEA has been found to competitively inhibit TRPV1. Equals Topic Biochemistry. Equals 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 Topic Biosynthesis. Equals equals DHEA is produced in the zona reticularis of the adrenal cortex under the control of adrenocorticotropic hormone ACTH and by the gonads under the control of gonadotropin-releasing hormone GnRH. It is also produced in the brain. DHEA is synthesized from cholesterol via the enzyme's cholesterol side chain cleavage enzyme CYP11A1, P450SCC, and 17 alpha hydroxylase, 17, 20 lyase, CYP17A1, with pregnenolone and 17 alpha hydroxypregnenolone as intermediates. It is derived mostly from the adrenal cortex, with only about 10% being secreted from the gonads. Approximately 50 to 70 percent of circulating DHEA originates from desulfation of DHEAS in peripheral tissues. DHEAS itself originates almost exclusively from the adrenal cortex, with 95 to 100 percent being secreted from the adrenal cortex in women. Equals equals. Topic: Increasing endogenous production. Equals equals Regular exercise is known to increase DHEA production in the body. Calorie restriction has also been shown to increase DHEA in primates. Some theorize that the increase in endogenous DHEA brought about by calorie restriction is partially responsible for the longer life expectancy known to be associated with calorie restriction. Catalpol and a combination of acetyl carnitine and propionyl carnitine on 1 to 1 ratio also improves endogenous DHEA production and release due to direct cholinergic stimulation of CRH release and an increase of IGF 1 expression, respectively. <laughs> Topic Distribution Equals Equals In the circulation, DHEA is mainly bound to albumin, with a small amount bound to sex hormone binding globulin. The small remainder of DHEA not associated with albumin or SHBG is unbound and free in the circulation. DHEA easily crosses the blood brain barrier into the central nervous system. Equals equals. Topic Metabolism. Equals equals. DHEA is transformed into DHEAS by sulfation at the C3 beta position via the sulfotransferase enzymes SULT2A1 and to a lesser extent SULT1E1. This occurs naturally in the adrenal cortex and during first-pass metabolism in the liver and intestines when exogenous DHEA is administered orally. Levels of DHEAS in circulation are approximately 250 to 300 times those of DHEA. DHEAS in turn can be converted back into DHEA in peripheral tissues via steroid sulfatase (STS). The terminal half-life of DHEA is short at only 15 to 30 minutes. In contrast, the terminal half-life of DHEAS is far longer, at 7 to 10 hours. 
As DHEAS can be converted back into DHEA, it serves as a circulating reservoir for DHEA, thereby extending the duration of DHEA. Metabolites of DHEA include DHEAS, 7 alpha hydroxy DHEA, 7 beta hydroxy DHEA, 7 keto DHEA, 7 alpha hydroxyapiandrosterone, and 7 beta hydroxyapiandrosterone, as well as androsendiol and androstenedione. <laughs> Topic: Pregnancy. Equals equals. During pregnancy, DHEAS is metabolized into the sulfates of 16 alpha hydroxy DHEA and 15 alpha hydroxy DHEA in the fetal liver as intermediates in the production of the estrogens estriol and estetrol, respectively. Equals equals. Topic: Levels. Equals equals. Prior to puberty, DHEA and DHEAS levels elevate upon differentiation of the zona reticularis of the adrenal cortex. Peak levels of DHEA and DHEAS are observed around age 20, which is followed by an age-dependent decline throughout life eventually back to prepubertal concentrations. Plasma levels of DHEA in adult men are 10 to 25 nm, in premenopausal women are 5 to 30 nm, and in postmenopausal women are 2 to 20 nm. Conversely, DHEAS levels are an order of magnitude higher at 1 to 10 μm. Levels of DHEA and DHEAS decline to the lower nanomolar and micromolar ranges in men and women aged 60 to 80 years. DHEA levels are as follows, adult men, 180 to 1250 nanograms per deciliter adult women, 130 to 980 nanograms per deciliter pregnant women, 135 to 810 nanograms per deciliter prepubertal children prepubertal children, 1 to 5 years, 9 to 68 nanograms per deciliter prepubertal children 6 to 12 years, 11 to 186 nanograms per deciliter adolescent boys Tanner E3, 25 to 300 nanograms per deciliter adolescent girls. Tanner E3, 69 to 605 nanograms per deciliter adolescent boys. Tanner IVV, 100 to 400 nanograms per deciliter adolescent girls. Tanner IVV, 165 to 690 nanograms per deciliter. Topic: <laughs> Measurement. As almost all DHEA is derived from the adrenal glands, blood measurements of DHEAS, DHEA are useful to detect excess adrenal activity as seen in adrenal cancer or hyperplasia, including certain forms of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Women with polycystic ovary syndrome tend to have elevated levels of DHEAS. Chemistry. DHEA, also known as Androst 5 n 3 beta ol 17 one is a naturally occurring androstane steroid and a 17-ketosteroid. It is closely related structurally to androsendiol Androst 5 en 3 beta 17 beta diol androstenedione Androst 4 en 3 17 dione and testosterone Androst 4 n 17 beta ol 3 one DHEA is the 5 dehydro analog of epiandrosterone 5 alpha androstan 3 beta ol 17 one and is also known as 5 dehydroepiandrosterone or as delta 5 epiandrosterone. Topic: <inaudible> Isomers. The term dehydroepiandrosterone is ambiguous chemically because it does not include the specific positions within epiandrosterone at which hydrogen atoms are missing. DHEA itself is 5,6-dihydroepiandrosterone or 5-dehydroepiandrosterone. A number of naturally occurring isomers also exist and may have similar activities. Some isomers of DHEA are 1-dehydroepiandrosterone and 4-dehydroepiandrosterone. These isomers are also technically DHEA, since they are dehydroepiandrosterones in which hydrogens are removed from the epiandrosterone skeleton. Dehydroandrosterone DHA is the 3 alpha epimer of DHEA and is also an endogenous androgen. Topic: 
Topic: Clinical applications in human reproduction. Dehydroepiandrosterone replacement therapy has a positive repercussion in women's sexuality and well-being when these women suffer from adrenal insufficiency. During the medication with this compound, the most remarkable improvements are found in the grade of depression, anxiety and their physical consequences for example, a tendency toward exhaustion. It suggests that dehydroepiandrosterone is playing an important role at the neurosteroidal level. The reason for that is that dehydroepiandrosterone is the precursor of androgens in women and it is widely known that women with adrenal insufficiency experiment a broad decrease of active androgens. A single daily dose of 50 mg of dehydroepiandrosterone overcomes this deficiency. In line with the above, it has been demonstrated that DHEA dehydroepiandrosterone could increase the probability of success during IVF in vitro fertilization, since it enhances ovarian response toward stimulation. Women with low ovarian reserve, low levels of antral follicles and or low levels of antimalarian hormone have a higher risk of presenting a sparse response toward hormonal stimulation and a higher difficulty of achieving pregnancy during in vitro fertilization. History DHEA was first isolated from human urine in 1934 by Adolf Boutenant and Kurt Cherning. 